Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Win with Sellers. I'm Terry Shmoleski, and I'm the lead listing agent for the Shmoleski team. And we're on track this year to close around 130 transactions or about $30 million in revenue. So my passion is listings, and listings are the cornerstone of my business. And um, I'm really thrilled to be here today to show you how you too can become a successful listing agent. So why do we think listings are important when you own a real estate business? Ben? Because from there come buyers. Right, anybody else? Jeff? I was gonna say they generate buyers. And they absolutely do. And it also generates market share, brand recognition, and from every listing you should get at least one or two transactions. And if you have a successful listing, you'll get more listings. So that's really why we concentrate on listings in real estate. So the purpose of our class today is to teach you how important it is to connect with sellers and to build confidence and trust. You'll also learn the confidence building technique, the two for one, and then we'll do a little exercise to see if you tend to look at things from a seller's perspective or from your own perspective. Does that sound good? Okay, great. So the truth is, when we go on a listing appointment, we are actually auditioning to be their realtor. So we want to keep everything conversational and friendly, and we lay the foundation for a great working relationship built on confidence and trust. So your first step in connecting to build confidence and trust, you do that by exuding confidence yourself and showing attentive professionalism by asking great questions. Confidence and trust are essential in your relationship with any seller. People will hire you if they trust you. So could someone read the Italian proverb on page 16 and it's at the bottom of the page, the numbers are at the bottom of the page. Great. Trust is lost in miles, regained in inches. And that is so true. Once you have someone's trust and you lose it, it takes a long time to gain it back. So, and let's remember, um, and let me ask you a question. What does it take for you to trust someone? Anybody? Marcy? They do what they say they're going to do. Yes. Julia? Um, a track record of their actions kind of proves that trust with you. Jeff? Um, just upfront honesty in every situation, not, not uh, beating around the bush or sure about anything. Right. So authenticity and also telling people the truth, not necessarily what only what they want to hear. And and so that's so important, would you agree, when you're working with sellers? Yes. 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 So let's talk about the confidence building technique, the two for one. So, so say you're on a listing appointment and the seller is being very reluctant and close to the best. So the two for one is where you offer two pieces of information and then they provide an answer to a question. So for example, I would say, Jen, the house down the street from you just sold two days ago and the house is coming on the market in a couple of days. So Jen, tell me, when do you want to move? I want to move now. Okay, great. <laughs> so your focus during this process is not to sell, it's to uh, provide value, meet their real estate needs, and earn their business. If they're still not forthcoming with answers, you could describe our process like that of a doctor. So I might say, Marcy, I'm a professional, and my goal is to sell your house for the best price, quickly, and with the least amount of trouble to you. So like a doctor or any professional, it's helpful for me to ask you questions so that I can give you the best possible advice. Is that fair enough? Yes. Terrific. So can someone read the tip on page 17? Confidence building is about connecting and learning about them. That's right. And let's remember our bold law, which is come from contribution. We always come from contribution. Let me tell you a story. I was once called by a seller in the neighborhood where I work a lot. and. Uh, what they said was, Terry, can you come list our house? So I was feeling pretty confident when I went over there. And when I got there, I talked a lot about how I was going to sell their house, how I was going to market their house, and how I work. 
what I failed to do was to ask them questions about what their goals were, what their expectations were, and how, how the method of selling their house is important to them. So what happened? They listed with another realtor. So I called them and I said, could you please tell me, you know, why you didn't choose me to be a realtor? And they said, you were just much too enthusiastic for us. And what it was is I didn't connect with them. I didn't make a connection when I was there. I went in assuming the, the listing and didn't do what I needed to do. So I think that's a good case in point of how important it is to build these connections and confidence and trust. So we need, and it, that, by the way, that was a $6,500 mistake, $6,500. So we need to think from a client's perspective, step outside of our own experience and feelings and think about their thoughts and motivations. Effective perspective taking hinges on three basic principles. One is you increase your power by reducing it. Once you take your power out of the relationship and really understand what the client wants, it's powerful, more powerful than dictation. And when you take a seller's perspective into account, you'll make more deals with much higher satisfaction. And the third principle is that we mirror and match. Discrete mimicry builds trust. And that's what we learn in most of our classes. So let's do an exercise together. Does that sound like fun? So we're gonna get in groups of two, and we're going to face each other. So you can get in your groups of two and face each other. Obviously, that's fantastic. And we're going to please decide who will go first in our exercise, in your group of two. And don't do anything yet, but the person who goes first is going to click their fingers on their dominant hand quickly, five times. And then you're going to write a capital E on your forehead. And then when the first person is done, the second person is going to take a turn. Okay? Any questions? What should the E be facing her or me? Write the E the way that you want to write the E. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, ben. <laughs> yes. So, everybody ready? Yes. Go! Oh, oh. How many hands are you supposed to do it? Just once. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> so they're just doing it. <laughs> just keep doing it. So let me ask you, who drew the E facing their partner? How would you determine if it was facing the partner? I didn't. So your partner could see it. Yeah. I did. Did everybody? No. No. Okay. So you. So you either wrote the E so the person you're talking to can see it or you wrote the E so that you could, you could see it. And that gives you a good, so let's talk about this. What do you think that means? What do you think that means, Jen? Exactly. You're looking at it from their perspective. What about you, Julia? How did you write your E? I did it so that Jack could see it. Awesome. He did not do it so that I could see it. Right. <laughs> and so now it's, it's a really great exercise to understand where your natural natural tendencies are coming. So your natural tendency is, is, is doing things from your own perspective. So we can reach out beyond ourselves and, you know, really. It's like when I'm in a listing presentation, if I have materials in front of me, I always turn it so that the person can see it. I don't turn it towards myself. I know the material, so I don't need to do that. You know, so just something to think about. Is that fun? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So this has been fantastic. And in this class, we've learned the importance of connecting with the seller. We've learned how to build trust and confidence. And we also learned the confidence building technique, the two for one. And we've learned whether you tend to take your client's perspective or your own. So, can I have some ahas, please? Any uh -huh. ahas, Julia? <laughs> um, I thought the putting the paper facing your clients. Um, people probably don't always think about that, but if you're confident in the material and you face it towards your clients, that's an aha. Uh -huh. That's yeah. awesome. Anybody else? 
Yes, I thought the exercise was brilliant. Um, it actually opens you up to see what your natural state is when you actually don't think about anything you're doing at home for your personal preference versus, you know, very exactly. matching the client. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of lessons in this. You know, connecting with people always uh, on so many levels, you know, and, and seeing things from their perspective. So anyone else have an aha, Ben? More important to listen than to talk, as you illustrated in your example. Yes, absolutely. I changed my ways after that one, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Does anyone have any questions? Nothing? Okay, well, thanks again for sharing your time with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.